we are so grateful that you are spending your Saturday with us today. Um, happy Saturday. Um, if you can put in the chat where you're joining us from, that would be really nice. It's nice, it's nice to meet everyone. My name is Olanike Olukunle. I graduated from Louisiana State University in 2021. This is my PhD in plant pathology. I self-partitioned for my green card in 2000 and 2021 and I got it. So since then, I've been helping others to, you know, put their package together and apply for their green card. And today, that is the purpose why we're here. We're not introducing EB2 and IW to you, but we are talking about the latest trends, the things that have changed since myself and Bobola, for example, applied, and the things that if you are in the process, you should be aware of. Again, it's nice to meet you, and I hope you would have a nice time with us today. So our agenda is really short. <laughs> it is mostly like 30 minutes to do everything we have to do and the remaining 30 minutes for you to ask us questions. So whatever questions that you have, you can ask us today and we'll be more than willing to answer. Um, so the first thing on the agenda, of course, is to introduce my green card story. That's the company that brought us here today if, if you're, okay, most of us are from Nigeria, but this time, this one hour is paid for by my green card story. So my green card story is an arm under Radiant Stone. Radiant Stone is an organization that is registered to help you with your writing needs. So you want to review, you want to, you want to write from scratch, whatever it is you're writing, we are here for you to help you through that process. And of course, like we said, we have services also for green card. So if you're trying to petition, self-petition by yourself, and you're looking for someone to write your green card for you, or just to review it, we are here for you. And those are our services. We would like you, Hazira, with us this Saturday, so please go on our social media pages. We have on Facebook, we are on Twitter, we are on um, Instagram. We'd like you to go and follow us on My Green Card Story. That's the handle for all this um, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Please for, follow us today. That's all we ask. This program is free. Please follow us, tell people about us, and mind that piece. So it was Bobola that first, of course, applied for his own in 2018 before I did mine in 2020 and got it in 2021. So um, he is the pace setter, as, as we say. So um, Theophilus, thank you so much. Um, Theophilus is joining us from Texas today. Um, if you're just joining us, we'd like to know where you're joining us from, especially if you're joining us from outside the United States. You know, want to know if you're staying late in the nights to just be with us today, you know. Um, the next thing on the agenda is, I feel like we should do drum rolls. So my green card story was registered last year. Am I, am I correct, Babola? And we've been working on something for everyone. So we, we did a lot of, we were in that phase where we were helping our friends and people that we know for free. And we were at that phase where we had to register a company and we su successfully did that last year. And now we have our website. So we are really excited to share the website with everyone. We think it will make things very easy for us and for you or the people that would be patronizing us or trying to know more about us. So the website, I'm going to share it now. It is beautiful. It is, it is functional. It is just what we needed. You know, they did a pretty good job. It just takes you straight to what you want. So 
you can go to the website now. It's not going to crash or anything. It's scalable or it's, it can take how many, the, the millions of people that want to, to work at once on that website. So I'm going to share my screen. Um, Bubble, if you would please allow me to share my screen. And I'm going to show you the website. I want to show you how you will navigate or just move around the website. If you want to tell people about us, about our services, and you want to make it easier for them, it is this link to this website that you're going to share with them. They can go there and just book us for, you know, just a phone call. You know, you just want to talk and it's just going to be for 30 minutes or for one hour. You just want to know where you stand. What are your chances? You know, you just want to send us your document to review. You want us to write you um, like a template recommendation letter maybe those people that are writing recommendation letter for you they've never done it before and they need a template what does it look like whatever it is you want you can just go on this website you just want to know more about me and Bobola. you can go on this website and see it so i will share my screen and you will see it um so here is our website and it is beautiful like i said um we are here this is just for my green card story like this is just for green card okay or eb2 niw route of green card if you want to start your consultation you just don't want to you, you already know what you're here for you need a consultation you can just start consultation here is going to take you to select the date you know a time which one of us you want to speak with myself or Bobola. And as we grow, you know, we'll have more, more um, staff members or staff, and you can pick from them. But for now, it's just, if you click here, it's just myself and Baba, like you'll see. And the time we have available or the slot we have available to speak with you, you can select it. I think you have given everyone a good summary of <laughs> what we do at my group Green Class Story. So in order not to waste people's time, I will just share my screen immediately so, so, so that we can get down to today's business. The title of today's talk is Latest News and Current Trends on EB2 NIW. Disclaimer. I am not an immigration attorney, and my green card story is not a law firm or a law chamber. No. Feel free to contact an attorney for legal advice. The advice given in this talk is based on my experience and those that we have worked with at my green card story. About me, so Nikke has talked about myself, and also she has spoken about herself. So I, I don't, I don't want to waste time on this. Our website, Nick has given you like a thorough overview of our, of our website. And uh, the web address is mygreencaststory.com. So don't forget to follow us on social media, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at mygreencaststory. And also on X, formerly known as <laughs> mygreencaststory without the O. Okay, so let's dive in. The first thing that I want to talk, talk about is about Form I-140. So USS is proposing to increase the application fee of Form I-140 from $700 to $715. I, I, I remember that they subjected this new fee, they, they subjected it to public hearing, and I think that public area was between I think February and May this year. So I, I, I don't know if they plan to implement that new fee structure by the next fiscal year. So the fiscal year starts in October. Okay. The, the, the next thing is that the response time from, from time you turn in your petition for EB2 and NIW to USS to the time you, you get an approved petition or maybe ARFE or whatever. It's, going, it's taking about four to five months. When I turned in my petition in 2018, it was taking about six months. 
by 2020, 2021, it was taking eight months. But now it's taking, I, I think it's between three to four months, okay? The third thing is, now there's been an increase in the number of applicants. Hmm. When I turned in my, my position in 2018, I knew only one person that was also working on this expedition for EB2 NIW. And, and I had only one example of, of someone that, that, that has done it successfully. From, yeah. from, from 2018 up to now, like right now, anytime I go like to a gathering, I'm, I, I always see someone that, that is applying for EB2 NNW. In fact, people who have WhatsApp group for EB2 yeah. NNW, the number of applicants is a lot, so much. It's huge. And because of that, USCIS has stepped up their game. Oh. But I remember that in 2018, when I turned in my petition and I wrote my call letter, my call letter was 15 pages long, 15 pages. And my proposed endeavor was, I think I wrote, I wrote, I wrote my proposed endeavor in three sentences. Then I wrote a paragraph on, 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 on what I was working on as a PhD student. Okay, like, it, like a short paragraph. If you do that right now, I can tell you, you probably get the RFE. Don't do that. Now, USS, they want like a detailed description of your proposed endeavor. So usually I tell people to, to, to try and do that in one page or maximum one and a half page. Tell them your proposed endeavor and write a detailed description of your proposed endeavor. And another thing that I noticed that I've changed is in 2018, 2019, 2020, when you're writing your work position to advance your purpose and neighbor, and, 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 and let's say you want to, to, to write about your publication, all you need to, to say is that, oh, I've published five papers um, in the area of my purpose and neighbor. Can you refer to exhibit 11 to, to 11 to 15 of my published paper? And if you want, you can even list the titles of the paper in your call letter, and, that, that, and that's all. But now you, you can't just do that. You need to give them more in depth. So I, I will tell you more about that when I'm talking about uh, 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 RFEs. RFEs. So now let's talk about RFEs. RFE is request for further evidence. Basically, what it means is that let's say you turn in your I-140 and, and USS feel that some document are missing, you can get a RFE to provide that document or they feel that in your cover letter, there are some things that you did not address, can also get an RFE, and in that RFE, they tell you to address those things. So as I was saying earlier, it, 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 from 2018 up to, to 2021, you can just say, oh, I've published five papers, refer to exhibit, uh, 11 to 15 for samples on, on my published paper. And that's fine, that will work. But now you can't just do that. The number one, they want to tell them how your publication has positioned them to advance your proposed level. So I tell people to use that in at least four to five sentences, tell them how your research experience can be used towards achieving your proposed level. Then also they want to provide a comparative analysis of how many people have published papers in your field. So let's say an average researcher has published like two or three papers in your field, and you have published five papers. Also because your number of publication is higher than those of an average researcher in your field, you can use that to say, oh, you are exceptional and you have accomplished a lot in your field. Another thing that, that, that I see that's common on that request for, for evidence is citation. So before, before 2023, you can just say, oh, I have 40 citations and that's, that'll be all. But now they want to know how many of, of those citations are self-citation, are uh, independent citations. Number mm -hmm. two, don't, don't, they want to provide a comparative analysis of how your citation record Compared to, compares to those in your field. So let's say an average. Researcher in your field, let's say your field is biology, or let's say we uh, receive three citations per paper. So 
still my citation record is higher than those of, of an average researcher in my field. So, so the next thing is research grant. Before you can say, oh, I have research grant from the Department of Energy National Science Foundation, and I was able to use the money from, 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 from the grant to fund my experiment. But now USS is claiming that hundreds of thousands of researchers get research grant every year. So if you are writing your call letter that you have gotten research grant, you, you need to write a logical argument of how that research grant shows that you have accomplished a lot in your field and also how that research grant has positioned you to advance your purpose and level, except especially if you are still working on that research and that research aligns with your purpose and level. And that thing they're arguing now is that your presentation, that if you have given a presentation in a conference, that does not show that you are well positioned to advance your purpose and level. They are claiming that these conferences are organized by professional association and they are sponsored by companies and, and, and that is normal within every field. So again, if, if you are presenting in any conference, you need to provide a logical argument of how the presentation has been shown to advance your purpose and level. So think about things like, oh, the opportunities to collaborate with people that you meet, that, that you met at the conference, the feedback you got from pre present, giving your presentation and how you have integrated those feedbacks into your research to fine tune your results. So make sure that you work all those things into your petition cover letter. So last two months ago, so there was a, a, a gentleman that I, I helped him to draft his petition cover letter. He sent me a text and he said, oh, Bobola, GSS is revoking approved I-140. So I said, okay, how, how did you know about this? So apparently it belongs to a, a WhatsApp group for people that, that are trying to apply for AB2 NIW. And he told me that on that WhatsApp group, they shared a list or maybe they're developing a list of all the people that the I-140 has been, has been revoked. I mean, this I-140 has been approved, but the approval was re revoked. So he shared the list with me, but I told him, I told him to give me a sample of the of the letter that USI sent to, to those people that, that that question were revoked, but he didn't give me a, any sample. So I don't know if what he's saying is true or not. So I, I did a search online, then I told my my, my brother-in-law about it because he also help, helps people to draft petition cover letter for EB2 and NW, and he also did his, his own search online. And we found this document online. This, this was released in, in 2007, and it's about a, petition, a pet, petitioner whose I-140 was revoked. So I read it uh, to understand why his petition was revoked. And his petition was revoked because the, this person falsified um, an award and also plagiarized an article by claiming that he is the author. So I'm going to explain what this person did for you by giving an illustration. So let's say Nikke published an article on, um, on, uh, on, on how to eradicate the disease in rice. In, 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 in rice, okay? And because the uh, uh, research findings in that article was very, very good. A lot of people read it, a lot of people cited it. And the, the journal, let, let, let's say it's, it's a journal for patho pathogen or something like that, gave her an award for outstanding research of the year. So, and, and I say myself, I'm trying to apply for EB2. And I decided to take Nikkei's article Erase our name and put my name on it. Like I, 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 I print my name on a small piece of paper and put my name on it. Then mm -hmm. also the award that Nineke got, I also erase our name and I put my name on it. 
and I turned it in, in as evidence. That was what this, this person did. Uh, because of that, USIS revoked this pet petitioner um, approved I-140, okay? Mm -hmm. So the lesson learned is do not falsify any documents. Another thing that I see that is going around I, um, in terms of the, the WhatsApp message that that guy sent to me is that they're saying that if, let's say you have written your cover letter and you, you turn it in, do not share your, your, your cover letter with other people because they might just copy and paste <laughs> your, your cover letter into their own and turn it in. So personally, I think I've seen that happen. There, there was a time I gave someone like a sample of a recommendation letter and I, because the person was saying that I, sh I should give, that I, I, I should serve as a, a, a reference and the person like practically copied a paragraph of, of the recommendation letter into the one that was drafted for me. So when I saw it, I had to take my time to, to really re re rewrite it because I don't want each, I don't want that recommendation letter to be the same with the ones I've, with the one I wrote before. Sure. And that's what I noticed that, that people do is actually people that draft recommendation letters for, for their references that there are times in which they write the same thing in five letters. Let, let, let's say the, in, in, in the letter they, they are writing the importance of, uh, of their cyber security skills to the US. The way they write it verbatim, they copy it from letter A and paste in letter B, C, and D. Personally, I feel that is wrong. And I feel <laughs> if someone decides to do that, there's a high chance the person will get ARFE because there's no distinction um, um, among all those letters. So please try and avoid it. And that's reason why USS can revoke and approve I-140 is if, so let's say your employer filed your EB2 and IW for you and just approved, okay? And before you, you got your, your green card, you decide to change job. Your previous employer can write to USS and tell them to revoke your I-140. But for majority of people on this platform, I guess you are self petitioning, so, so that will not apply to you. So let's talk about adjustment of status from I-140. So now, you, 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 if you have an approved I-140, you cannot just turn in your adjustment of status form like that. You need to wait until your visa date is current. And the way you check that is by checking the visa bulletin. And I'll be talking about that in subsequent slide. And because of that, there's so many people that, that I want for has been approved and they have not been able to adjust their status. I know someone that, have, that his person has been approved since December last year. And up to now, he, can, he cannot even talk on his adjustment of status because his, par, his, his priority date is not current. For those that don't know what the priority date is, basically is when you turn in your I-140 to, to, to USS, and uh, USIS process your payments, let's say it's a check or a money order. As soon as, uh, as soon as they cash that check, they will send you a document, which is from I-797, it's a, a receipt for that payment. And, and in that document, it will show you like a tracking number and you say, oh, your priority date is so-so and so dates. So that date determines everything. It determines when your Doc, where your petition will be read, and it determines when you can adjust your status, and it also determines when you will eventually get your green card. So the earlier you turn in your, your petition, the better, because it is based on first confessor. Another thing that I'd like to talk about is the increase in the fee for I-485. I so right now, when you're adjusting your status, the application fee for Form I-485 is $1,225. USS is planning to increase that fee to $1,540. So we still don't know if they will implement this new fee by October 1st. Also, as at now, 
if if you are turning in your adjustment status form, that's from I-155, together with your employment authorization document, which is I-765, and your advanced parole, which is from I-131, USS is waiving the application fee for, for from I-765 and I-131 for you. So that means you only pay $1,225. But after this new fee structure uh, has been implemented, you need to pay the application fee for I-765 and I-131. So that means for those for these three forms, you'll be paying $2,820, which is a lot of money. For, for those that have not seen like, a green card before this is what a green card looks like the picture on the right shows you how a green card looks like so usually it, it it's going it's going to be valid for 10 years and if it expires you can renew your green card and and if, if you have become a permanent resident for five years you can file to become a u.s citizen so let's talk about adjustment of status filing charts each month, you, 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 USS um, will release like a publication on their website to tell potential applicant, that is people that want to adjust their status, which charts they will use. So if you look at the bottom of this page, the, the bottom right-hand corner of this slide, you'll see next month adjustment of status filing chart. Under employment-based preference, it says they are using the final action date chart. Okay, so now let's go to the two different charts available. So there are two charts available in the visa bulletin for employment base. There's the final action date chart and there's the date of filing. So if you look at the final action date chart, You see these two, these two means, this second means EB2. They are saying that for all chargeability, they are working on those that are turning that petition um, on April 1st, 2022. So that, so that means if you turn in your petition in March, 2022, you can turn in your adjustment of status document. However, if you turn in your petition in, let's say, April 15, 2022, you cannot turn in your adjustment of status document. Yes. If you look at the date of filing for EB2, it says December 1st, 2022. Even though the, the, this date, the December 2022 is like eight months away, USS is not using this chart. And because that's still stuck at April, that's why there are so many people that the I want for that has been approved, but they cannot adjust their status. I remember when I turned in my document, the, the dates were current. So then, as soon as your I want for is approved, you can adjust your status immediately. But now it's not so. And then people file concurrently. That is, they 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 turn in their form I want forty together with their adjustment of status document. And within one month, they get that EAD card. But now, even if you turn in those forms together, you won't get your EAD card because I have a friend that turned in all those forms together and he didn't get an EAD card. So because of this backlog, Congress decided to write Department of Homeland Security. Yeah. So USCIS is under Department of Homeland Security. And this letter was sent to Department of Homeland Security on July 28th, 2023. Basically, what this letter says is this, that Canada is recruiting foreigners with STEM degrees, with STEM talent, and that USS have a lot, is still delaying people from adjusting their status. So this letter is telling uh, the, the, the DHS that they should make all visa dates current mm -hmm. by October 1st, 
2023. Then also, they're also telling the Department of Homeland Security to allow everyone that, that, that have an approved I-140 to turn in the adjustment of status forms between October 1st and October 31. They are saying this because there, are, there is 140,000 employment-based green card available. And they say that in the previous years, USCIS do not usually give out all those green cards, that they waste it. So Congress is, is not telling them that they should not waste those green cards again, that they should make sure that everyone turn in the uh, status in October so that they will have more than enough people to give green card. Yeah. And in this document, at the bottom of this do document, there was a link on that document and I decided to click on that link. And when I click on that link, it led me to another document. And this document is a congressional research service. I think it's probably an office under US Congress. And it says, build back better art. So I read this document and I was able to pick a couple of things. Number one, section 6002 says recapture of unused immigration visa number. So according to this document, you, 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 they want USIs to, to recapture all the unused visa. In, in, in previous, financial year, they want them to recapture it and, and, and use it in the next financial year. According to this document, between 1992 and 2021, they, there's, they estimate that there's about 194,000 um, employment-based green card that were never issued, that, 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 that were wasted by USIs. So they are telling them that they should add that number to the 140,000 employment based green card that they will give in this coming fiscal year so that people that are waiting to, to get their green card can finally get their green card. That is what Congress is saying. Section 6003 says that the demand for immigration visa, mainly employment based, based green card, has reached 1 million. That, that 1 million prospective immigrant. So they are telling you, 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 um, USS that they should allow people to turn in the adjustment of status document, whether their visa date is current or not, yeah. or whether their Paris date is current, or whether there's visa available or not, they should allow them to turn in the adjustment of status document. So this is what this document says. So since I have your email, I'm happy to share the, the document with you so that you can go through it in, in details. So on this note, I'm going to end my presentation. Please follow us on social media, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X. Thank you so yeah. much. Any question? Thank you everyone for um, your attention. We are so grateful you're still with us.